Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about a sub-process. Now the idea of sub-process is it's in a way does replace other modules and in another way it's its own thing entirely. But it replaces things like um, like os.system, os uh, piping, all that kind of stuff as well as like some commands. Basically what um, sub-process is going to let you do is communicate so so a system as you saw we could we could send and do some communication from the shell so your command prompt bash from shell to a script and get the output from the script right in this way we can actually do the reverse so we can communicate from the script to the shell and get the output from the shell so the best thing to do from this point is to just kind of go over it now up here I have um, a Raspberry Pi that I'm using and then also I have just my regular um, this is my Windows 7 so depending on you know what operating system you're using the commands that you run are going to be slightly different um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see CD desktop here and then I'm gonna CD into end so, yeah. um, and then here we're just staying at home okay so so the first thing you want to do, now I just kind of recommend that you run this in a shell somewhere so you can actually see the output because if I, and a little bit through the tutorial we'll actually capture the output via our script in Python but to start you don't necessarily, you're not going to always capture the output so if you're following along in like an IDE at first um, you're not going to see the results so anyway so it just makes sense to me either command.exe or, or like some sort of shell, SSH, whatever so anyway, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'll start showing in Windows, and then I'll show it in uh, Linux. So if you're on Windows, to start a Python um, interpreter, you just type in Python. And then if you're in Linux, you'll type uh, either Python, um, which would give you probably, yeah, 2.7 for me, because I've got both 2.7 and 3 installed on this machine. So you hit Control-D, and then Python 3 should, yeah, should give you Python 3 interpreter. Um, make some space there come over here okay so on Windows let's say you want to just run a command so a simple command I think on both you know on Linux LS and then on Windows dir is just gonna list what's in that directory so uh, let's cover that first so let's say if you're in Windows let's say sub process dot call and we're gonna call dir and then we're gonna say shell equals true now what this is doing is basically subprocess and then dot call it's like calling this command dir is the command it's calling and then shell equals true means we want to do it within the shell you could call it you could call it in something else if you wanted that's for maybe a way later tutorial uh, for now always have shell equals true because that's where you want to execute so we'll call dir shell equals true we hit enter oops sub pro oh silly me you have to import subprocess derp Okay, subprocess imported, uh, up arrow, up arrow, there. Now we call it dir. And as you can see, we get this little output here. Um, if you're in a, an IDE, let's say, that's pure Python, you even though you did this call, you wouldn't have actually seen this data right here. So same thing on uh, Linux. Uh, I thought if I did these like enters, I would make space, but we're not making space. Let me do this then. Okay, so import uh, sub process again, and now um, for Linux it'll be ls. So sub process dot call, and we want to call this time ls and shell equals true. So same thing as before, and this time it lists out all the things that are basically in my home directory, right? Um, so and again though, if you were in a, just an IDE and you ran this on Linux you wouldn't have any output, it wouldn't say anything. So now, how do we actually acquire output? Um, we'll go back to Windows, I guess, since we're doing Windows first. Um, and so to do that, you would do something like this. So you could say output equals subprocess dot check underscore output. And then you do basically the same thing we did before. So we'll say dir, and then again, shell equals true. Run that. And now you don't get anything, but we can print um, output and now you get your output now of course we have like this return a new line shit that's coming up uh, excuse the language uh, but so this one's actually really messy 
but we can we can still parse by that you know so you can re you can use replaces and really at the end of the day you would be parsing by that um, or splitting by that really anyway so just because it looks like that it looks kind of ugly to our eyeballs but for whatever reason that you were wanting to do this in a script um, it's not that not that hard now we come back over here to uh, Linux. We can do the same thing. Subprocess dot check. Oops, actually we want to define this as output equals subprocess dot check underscore output. And again, uh, same output or not dir <laughs> ls. And then show equals true. And then we can print the output. And there you go. You get. Um, the things that are here now again this one's kind of ugly again but as you can see you've got desktop new line ensmo new line ocr.py.png um, new line python games blah 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 so those are just a couple of quick things now i realized that all we did was show um, running a command and how to get output from that command but hopefully uh, after that you can sort of understand how powerful those just those two things are because now you can run any command. So, uh, for example, um, hmm, let me show you. Uh, let's open up uh, Python 3 here. So, let me bring over um, this. Okay, so this is the list of all of our Python tutorials. And here we have our system tutorial. Uh, so, if you remember, we did system in and all that. So, I can hold shift, come up here, open command window here. And if you recall, uh, I think it was sys.py, which is a really horrible name to name that file. In fact, let's change that to like sys.tut or something. They never got us in trouble before, but if you ever like learning a tutorial, or uh, uh, learning a tutorial, learning a module, it's really easy to name the file something. Like for example, um, when I was practicing like SMTP lib, uh, I named it, I think email or something.py because I wanted to send an email with it. And that conflicts, right? And s naming something sys.py conflicts with sys. So anyway, that's always a stupid idea. Um, anyway, so sys.tut now. And if you remember, uh, if we ran Python um, and we did sys.tut.py, and then we said um, example, um, what sys.tut.py did for us was it used a sys.argv and it would take any arguments that we passed uh, through via the shell. So again, we're communicating from the shell to our Python script, and then in that Python script, we're able to grab what the shell said. Um, now what we're showing is basically how to communicate from the, the script to the shell and grab what the shell said. Um, but we can tie those two things together. So instead, what we could do is uh, we could go Python. So we open up Python. And now we're, we're in this directory, right? So we're actually in um, the sys directory running a Python shell right now. And so what we can do now is say something like this. So import um, subprocess. And then we could say uh, output. Actually, let's just run the command. So uh, we could go subprocess.call. And then we can call Python. Um, what would we call it? Sys, yeah, sys.tut.py. And then check this out. And then we run this in shell equals true again. Oh, <laughs> oops. Uh, so anyway, check this out. Um, shouldn't have had those little spaces there, but that's okay. Uh, what we can do instead, ooh, this will, get, this will be interesting. Let's see if I can get away with this. Uh, so if you remember, we had to encase all of that into quotes. Let's see if we can do this. Check this out. Ugh. <laughs> oh man, now I'm angry. Um, so it's it's acting like these are all their own. You know, every space is the uh, every space is a different argument. Normally, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I mean, you could do like an under under case or, or underline, you know, or whatever. Uh, underscore. That's the word. Man. Call Python. I'm not really sure how to tie those together. If somebody knows how to tie those together, so I can uh, like a tie a string together, because that worked before, I believe to use. I can't remember. I think it was double quotes before though. Um, so we could encase. Let's try and encase this in single quotes, and we'll use double quotes here. And if that doesn't work, 
Sorry for wasting your time. Uh, Python. Yeah, success. <laughs> Doesn't feel good. Anyway, uh, so so here we can see that we're actually in a Python script, communicating to the shell, running something from the shell, passing an argument through the shell back to a script. So we're communicating from script to script, basically, uh, doing this. Now, there's a lot of other ways that we can do this. Um, so I live by a naval base, and sometimes they fly fighter jets over. Not sure if y'all could hear that. Probably not, but I could hear that. They make my dog really mad. Anyway, um, so here's an example of us passing Python syscall, and then obviously we could do a subprocess uh, dot check underscore output, and then we could do the same thing again. So Python syscut dot pi. Uh, whoa! Picture Neo when you say that. Um, and then shell equals true. It's hard when things aren't colored for you. There we go. Okay, so we've checked the output, so we could store this right to output. Obviously, we're starting with you know this like bytecode stuff and the R and the N. I think the R is for return, and then obviously new line. Anyway, um, so that's how we could uh, store the values back, so we could communicate by between scripts. Now, obviously, we can just import scripts this way, uh, but here's a way where we can actually communicate to and from uh, again two different programming languages very simply just by passing arguments in and out of uh, your command prompt. So um, anyway, enough on that. Uh, just showing you guys, I mean, there's just really endless things. It's kind of like when I show you the URL lib tutorial. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, but when you combine all the things that you can do with the internet, it suddenly becomes amazing. Um, same thing here. If, if you're able to access the shell, you can run any shell command. I mean, you could run anything. So um, here we could go like this. We could say subprocess.call, and then we can actually call, um, let's see, sudo apt get install python tweepy. Okay, so we can actually install modules even this way. Oops, sudo apt get install python tweepy. No such problem. Let's see. Sudo, oh, okay, I see what we do. Uh, shell equals true. Okay, so here. From a Python script, we're you know installing packages and all of this, and we're able to get away with running sudo and all of that. So, anyway, uh, I think we'll cut it off here. But just showing you guys, I mean, this there's so many things that you can do um, with this ability to communicate back and forth. So, anyway, I'll leave the, all those possibilities up to you. If you guys have any questions or comments uh, on this video, uh, feel free to share them below. I know some people are going to ask about pipes. I'm going to cover pipes in her own tutorial video entirely. Uh, so uh, eventually we'll get to that. I'm not really sure when I'm going to cover that. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions or comments on this video, pl please feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.